Hypothetical. You receive a highly successful career in exchange for two years of crippling anxiety brought upon by your own failure. Do you accept? No, this isn't a Go Army ad. This is your life as a closer. And weirdly enough, many of the best relievers of our time took a similar path to success. Which is to say they flamed out miserably as a starting pitcher and eventually found their calling in the bullpen. If Mariano Rivera could shut the door on 600 games, why couldn't he cut it in the first five innings of a game? If Eric Gagne could strike out 137 batters and win a Cy Young, why did he have a 5 ERA as a starter? To answer these questions, we first have to understand how pitchers are viewed through the eyes of a GM. Historically speaking, pitchers aren't drafted as relievers, and that's because, simply put, a good starter will bring more value to your team than a good reliever will. Most GMs subscribe to the theory that you can always move a starter to the bullpen if he doesn't pan out, but if you draft a reliever and he doesn't pan out, that's pretty much it. This is the basic matrix. A good starter will also be a good reliever. A bad starter may or may not be a good reliever. A good reliever may or may not be a good starter, and a bad reliever will always be a bad starter. On the good chance that that made absolutely no sense to anyone, let's illustrate whatever I just said with some examples. Dennis Eckersley was a great starter, and he was a great reliever. Carlos Marmol was a bad starter, but he was a good reliever. Guys like Michael King and Garrett Crochet have proven to be good relievers and good starters. And then for this last one, I don't have an example, so just pick someone random from the White Sox bullpen and let's call it a day. Ideally, you're looking for good arms anywhere you can find them, but in today's game, it can be extremely valuable to have a guy who can do both if need be. For this video though, we're going to be focusing on this group right here. Except in these cases, the bad starters didn't become good relievers. They became historically great relievers. They say a pitcher's best friend is strike one. Well, if that's the case, then these pitchers were losers because they rarely found the strike zone over the course of a start. I'm exaggerating, of course, but high walk rates were indeed common among this group, and it really throttled their ability to put a quality start together. As a starter, you typically want to have at least three pitches to work with in order to keep hitters off balance. Guys like Andrew Miller, Zach Britton, and Mariano Rivera didn't really have a third pitch that they could confidently throw. And actually, in Rivera's case, he really didn't even have a second pitch noting himself that he never had a good breaking ball. This took the guesswork out for hitters and likely led to the high walk rates as pitchers were trying to pinpoint their location as a way of compensating for their predictability. Another reason a player might get the boot from his starter role is because of a team-specific need. In Eric Gagne's case, the Dodgers' previous closer, Jeff Shaw, actually retired at the end of the 2001 season which is why Eric Gagne got the opportunity to close the next year. Andrew Miller lost the last spot in the rotation coming out of spring training with the Red Sox in 2012 and was forced to the bullpen. And Luke Hochaver's elbow injury opened the door for Wade Davis to become a permanent mainstay in the Royals bullpen entering the 2014 season. There are other examples that aren't necessarily shared among all the guys, but are more player-specific. Like Eric Gagne notes that being a closer fit his personality more because he could let loose. And Liam Hendricks talked about how the Twins used him wrong, saying that as an organization they wanted their pitchers to have good sinkers and changeups, both pitches that he didn't throw well as a power pitcher. But enough about what didn't work. How did these guys all turn it around so drastically, seemingly overnight? Oddly enough, the thing that dooms a starter's career tends to be their saving grace as a reliever. All of these pitchers were given a chance to succeed in the bullpen, not just because starting didn't work out, but because they had noticeable strengths too. Batters couldn't touch Andrew Miller's slider. No one knew how to hit Eric Gagne's Vulcan changeup. And trees started killing themselves before they were slaughtered by Rivera's cutter. Transitioning to a reliever was the thing that finally highlighted their rare ability after being kept under wraps as a starter for so long. It's like Brian Cranston. Sure, he was good in Malcolm in the Middle, but he needed the opportunity of Breaking Bad to show the world that he had Walter White in him the whole time. Now let's talk numbies. One of the obvious things that happens when someone moves to the bullpen is their velocity will tick up. Batters didn't have any trouble hitting these fastballs when they were 90 to 91, but 95-96 is a different story. Britton, Davis, Miller, and Hendricks all saw fairly decent jumps in their velocity, but one guy who didn't join the club was Brad Hand. His fastball remained stagnant at 92-93, but he was able to win in another way, by adding a new pitch. In 2016, Brad Hand unleashed his newfound slider on the league and dominated for a season-high 89 innings of relief. 
The pitch generated 61 strikeouts and was top 10 in whiff percentage, just behind guys like Blake Snell and Edwin Diaz. Adding a brand new pitch is cool and all, but it's also a try-hard move. Most of the other pitchers chose to stick with their current pitches and just tweak their usage a bit. Britton went full throttle with his sinker, electing to throw it over 90% of the time. Andrew Miller dropped his changeup and sinker to move to a fastball slider combo. And Wade Davis gave up on his changeup and sinker to attack hitters with his four seam cutter and knuckle curve. The natural output of all this was success. Lots of strikeouts, lots of holds, lots of saves. Andrew Miller still holds the postseason record for strikeouts. Eric Gagne holds the record for the most consecutive saves in a season. Wade Davis won a World Series. Mariano, of course, is Mariano. And probably the most impressive accomplishment of them all was Zach Britton not strangling Buck Showalter in the 2016 wildcard game when he refused to put him in for God knows what reason. So what about current day examples? Let's start with Griffin Jacks. He's quickly becoming one of the best relievers in baseball, and he didn't even pretend to be good as a starter. One season, 14 starts and a 6-10 ERA. But now, he's lights out and sits atop the pitching plus leaderboard on fan graphs, which is a stat I know nothing about but is probably useful. Matt Brash is another good example. The Mariners wanted him to make it as a starter, so they gave him a chance in 2022, but he just couldn't throw enough strikes. Oh well, I guess he'll have to settle for a 35% strikeout rate as a reliever. And I'll give you one more. This guy hasn't made the transition yet, but I'm going to call my shot here. D.L. Hall, left-handed pitcher for the Brewers. They tried to make him a starter this year, and it's all the things that we talked about. He isn't throwing as hard. He isn't throwing enough strikes and batters are keying in on that fastball at 92-93. to 93. I know he got hurt, but it still feels obvious when I watch him pitch that he's just not a starter. Drop that changeup, drop the curveball, and just let it rip with the fastball and slider. So the next time you're watching a game where the starter gives up 9 earned runs in the first inning, just remember, you might be watching the next Mariano Rivera. That's a terrible line. Oh yeah, like you could do any better. Anyone can recognize greatness in the end, but only few can recognize greatness in the now.